It's video time. It's video time. Video time. Whoop de doo. Okay. So you guys have been waiting for this one. This is uh actually I've had many of you guys ask me about how to do this and then I've had the other half of you say, Oh yeah, we do that all the time. Um so what I'm gonna show you guys today is how to modify a switch to run on DC. Now I don't have any exciting switches here as of yet. I just have a couple of scrappers that I pulled from previous jobs. I use this one as my bench uh, POE supply just for running uh, uh, equipment for testing. And honestly, this one I just pulled out of a box in my uh, storage uh, room. So I already showed you this guy in a previous video. Um, so what we have here, this is non-POE. This is standard POE, 48 volt, 802.3 AF. Um, yeah, so I'm going to show you a couple ways to do this. All right, now first of all, let's get some parts out of the way. So let's, I'm going to shove this shit to the back. Okay, these, many of us call them banana plugs. They can be called banana plugs or binding posts. Um, I will include a link to these guys on Amazon so that you may get them for yourselves. I think I paid 20 bucks for 10. Now these are double binding posts, and they're nice because they've got the isolators here as well to protect from getting blown up. Okay, so we're gonna need these guys here for these. We've got our boost converters, which this one doesn't need a boost converter because it's only 12 volts. This one is 48 volts. It will require a boost converter. All right, you understand that, good. Okay, fuse holders. Yes, you are going to want a fuse holder. And you're going to want a full bridge rectifier in this as well because this will help you protect your equipment from getting reverse polarity damaged. That's another very, very important part. And if you really, really want to get fancy, you can throw some MOVs in there for good measure. They'll act as surge suppressors to protect from any uh, electrical surges coming in through the uh, uh, in power input. All right. Okay, oh, excuse me. So the first one I'm gonna do is just a simple conversion. We're gonna take this standard 48 volt uh, POE switch, and we are simply going to convert it to a DC switch. Okay, so as you can see here, this has the power supply in it. Uh, let's see here, we're looking at 65 watts, output 48 to 54 volts. So the nice thing about that, I'm trying to find my calculator. Um, 40 to 54 volts means that that's covering the full range of voltage that, uh, I've got a tablet, hold on. Forty-eight volts is typically when the batteries are dead. And I need a tablet, sorry. Let's use this one. Sorry about that. All right, I want a calculator. So uh, here's a calculator. It's nice and big, so you guys can see what I'm doing. Okay, so we see that this guy here is 65 watts. That that number is kind of important to us. I'm going to turn the light down a little bit so you can actually see what's going on on the screen here. Or you know what? What if I could just do this? Hold on. Let me just experiment here. Sure nope, that makes it way worse. All right, hopefully you can just see the screen. I might have to get like an KSR? old person type calculator for a later video. So anyway, 65 watts. Okay, so 65 watts divided by 48 volts, because that's the lowest voltage, is 1.3 amps. Yay. But that's not what's going to be coming into this. The lowest voltage that's going to enter this unit is going to be 12 volts DC more than likely. So let's take 65 watts and divide it by 12 volts. In fact, 65 divided by 11.2. So this thing can pull a whole whopping 5.8 amps at its worst when it's trying to upconvert, okay? So we now know that we need a 5.8 amp fuse. <sighs> uh, five is the closest one we've got, so let's put a five into our fuse holder, which we will be using here. 
Jesus, I'm dropping things. I've got the drop safe. Okay, here we go. So I've only got five, so five should cut it. But realistically, let's just up the math a little bit. Um, let's see here, 65 divided by um, 12. That's just an arbitrary number. Still 5.41. Okay, so at full load, this thing's capable of pulling 5.4. Eh, I don't like to do this, but uh, 8 is the closest one I've got, so whatever. The whole idea is critical failures to be protected, not overload protection. There we go. That's 8 amps. Okay, now I want to show you something. Okay, so the full voltage of um, sealed lead acid batteries, AGMs, is typically about 13.5 volts. So let's multiply that by 4 because it's 48 volts. Notice we get 54 volts, and if you look here, 54 volts. That is because... Um, these guys are designed to operate within the full swing of a sealed lead acid charge cycle. That's the whole idea of uh, most DC equipment is that they take into consideration power. Okay. Uh, batteries. Power. Whatever. Fuck okay. it. You get the idea. All right. So let's take this thing apart for a second here. And I'm going to get a multimeter down here so that you can see what I'm doing. I'm going to put it over here so that... Uh, Nobody, uh, I think I there we go. Good enough. But they're still good. I like yes, I still am playing with lights and stuff yeah, like that. So well. I need a screwdriver. Which I don't know what I did with the damn things. Oh, here they are. I think I want this one. All right, so what do we got? One, two, three, four. Okay, so I'm going to get a screw container. By the way, you know what I do to get these screw containers? I go to the dollar store, and I buy candles. And then I burn the candles, and then I boil them, and I take the wax out, and I put the wax into a container, and I collect it, and it ends up looking like something like this. <laughs> That's a Wendy's lid full of wax. Cool, eh? And then I use these little containers for stuff. So, let me get the wax off the bench. Okay, we'll put that back in there. So we've got uh, one screw left. Or is there still two more? Yeah, there's two more in the front. So I can take this off and look at that. <gasps> wow, 90% of, sorry, 70% of the space inside of this enclosure is actually dedicated to a Ethernet switch. And then this teeny tiny little bit over here is for your PSU. So, let's go over here. I'm going to grab power cord. Big mean old power cord. And I'm going to unplug something at random. Because God knows I need more plugs. That shouldn't be making rattling noises. Okay, now let's plug the switch in. Uh, <laughs> That's not good. And as you can see, it's powering up. And I want to check the voltage on this PSU. And by the way, notice this generic, generic PSU in here. I don't even know if it's got CSA or UL. Does it? I see CE, but I don't see UL or CSA or anything on this thing, so... Whatever, so we've got uh, 200 volts here. Let's see what we're getting off the PSU. We're getting a solid 53, 53.8 volts, and this is actually very well calibrated. So, you know, you could do a couple of things here. You could actually just stick one of these on the back of this if you really want it to be fancy. And you can just tie it directly into these leads, and you could actually just use this as a UPS as well. You could actually tie your batteries directly into this and charge it off this little tiny PSU. Yes, you could absolutely do that and that would probably work because look at the voltage. We're running at about 53.8 volts and if I get my calculator one more time... That's roughly float voltage. So if you wanted to, uh, say, put some... Let's see here, we'll go with 53.8 divided by 4 equals 
13.45. So that's a really comfortable <laughs> float voltage for this uh, cell. So look, you could simply take one of these, connect it to here with a uh, fuse in line to make sure that you don't blow shit up. And you can actually set this thing up to be a battery charger slash um, switch. But we're not going to do that today. Instead, we are going to completely remove this. And in fact, should I... Yeah, I'm going to remove that. We're going to reuse that. Okay, so I'm going to turn up the temperature on my soldering iron right now so we're prepped. And as you can see, I got my... In my last video, I made myself a power supply here for the bench, so... Alright. So we want to make this 53.8. Oh, excuse me. Burning the candle at both ends. Chances are this thing is still charged. Good, it's dead. Okay, so why don't we just steal these leads here? I really want to do that. So what I'm going to do, and by the way, I'm going to reuse this power supply one day. So I'm simply going to cut this off right there, but I'm going to leave enough of the leads in there, as you can see, that I can see your positive and negative sticking out. So if I ever want to reuse this board at some time, I could just peel out the silicone and desolder that, and we're good. Okay, now we need to change, uh, choose the appropriate power supply. Uh, we're only using a uh, 65 watts. These guys, both these guys are capable of doing about 200 watts or so. This one's actually a bigger one. Um, I'm going to use this cheap little guy right here. And we're also going to use one of these guys. A full bridge rectifier. Okay, so now what I'm going to do... Um, we're going to take the output here. Outs over here. Yeah, the negatives are usually bridged on these guys. Okay, we're going to strip these guys back. Now, by the way, don't jump the gun. You do not want to connect this to your switch unless you have tested your voltages, okay? You want to make sure that this thing is set for the appropriate voltage before you do anything. Otherwise, you will look like a fool when you blow up your switch or it doesn't perform and it ends up going into boot cycles because <coughs> it's uh, not set up properly. <laughs> All right. There we go. I'm just going to nip a teeny tiny bit of this off just to even it out. The same here. Nip. Okay, so here's our output right here. And it's clearly labeled positive and neg negative. Now, what this device is, this is a boost converter. It will take anything down to 9 volts and it'll boost it up to anywhere from, I think, 9 to 60 volts, I think, is this one. Get losses okay. Wheels. So that being said, let's do a little test now to make sure that we're not uh, wrong about that. So um, I'm gonna grab. I think I've got a couple of. Uh, we're gonna do our test. I need to grab a couple of crocodile clips here. And where's my other one? Is this my other one? Mm, no. If you were here right now, you could see what kind of a mess my uh, bench resides in. Is that, oh, um, you know what? Hmm. We have a minor issue here. Nah, this will work. Okay, I'm just gonna cut this lead off here. Because this is a shitty probe. There we go. And we will do this. I'm actually going to do this on both of them because I really don't care. I just bought a kill whole it, bunch of more fire. probes. So this is our positive. That's actually a pretty heavy probe. I'm actually kind of surprised at that. Okay, ah. let's put a bit of solder on these. They look fucking that bullshit. Solder can be bad for you. You it's like full that? of lead. So which means that in the state of California, it has been recognized to cause cancer and birth defects. It may actually end the world, too. Alright, so let's set our 
Terminals here. Here's a little trick, by the way. Take your screwdriver, pop it in. You're welcome. Okay, so we're gonna push that in there and tighten her down. All right, now let's do the same thing with this one. And pop this one in here. Now I know they're both red, but that's just because I'm being quick. And There we go. So the LED is on, so this is active. We're going to set this guy for 200 volts because we're trying to get up to 53.8. Okay, now usually this guy will have one or two uh, adjustment screws on it. This one's right here. So I'm going to stick this onto here off for a second. And as you can see, it's already at 49 volts. We're just going to dial that up just a wee bit more. So we got to go up to 53.8. All right, 53.8, that is what the previous power supply was putting out. Now, oh, one more thing. Verify your polarity. Red, black, yes. Now, if I plug this into this board, let's turn off one of the lights so you can see the LEDs. This thing sucks back to a lot of juice. Just keeps healing, hurting my piece. There you go. Switch this online. I can't hurt it. <laughs> just, Let's just check something shit. here. 53.8 stable. Now, let me just grab a... I'm going to grab a pretty new CAP. That's right, the Microtex CAP. I'm actually using these things religiously now. They look so good. Okay, here we go. All right, so this one will take up to 57 volts DC. 17 to 57, actually. So let us grab a patch cord. PoE in is right there. And here's our LEDs on the side. And we're going to plug this into one of the ports now. If that's any indication that this worked. And, oh, yeah, here. You can see my Ethernet cable so that it can, I'm not scamming you. Now, we're doing this. Okay, so what I would like to do now is just check the voltage on here under load. And we're still at 53.8. So this little guy is very, very happy right now. So everything's working. You can see that the Ethernet port is active. We have PoE and LAN. So, there, so we know that the switch is working. Oh, we are nowhere near completed, folks. So I'm gonna pull one of these leads out of here so we can dump the power on this and uh, take the unit down. So now, that's only the test. We're only getting started here, folks. We're gonna move this guy aside for a second. Okay, so now, we need to modify all this because we need to add our ports we need to add a fuse and we need to add this so where did i put my screwdriver now i am slowly going crazy here i'll just put that one aside for now okay so now we've got this this, we, are, we can just screw it down, actually, to be completely honest with you. Um, we can do this a few ways. Realistically, you're going to want to drill through here, and you're going to want to screw these cap stands in. Okay, so where are we sitting? So what I might do, let me just take a measurement here. We'll use the old calipers, because I want to make sure this thing's anchored. Here we go. Okay, so that gives us a rough idea. 
I'm just going to mark where this thing sits. So I'm going to push this back to the back just a little bit to give us some front, uh, some space in the front because I'm going to do the ports on the front of this unit actually. Why am I doing the front ports on the front of this unit? Um, just because I really want to do that because I want them front accessible so that uh, it is a lab device so I want to be able to plug into it. Okay, so we'll just go like this. I'll just uh, mark this and mark this and that should give us a rough idea. Now, you can take your calipers here I'm going to go center right there. Uh -oh. Alright, so that should give me a rough mark of where that belongs. Okay, so now oh, if that's right there like mark. that, I can simply figure out that... Uh... There we go. We want to go right there. Now, if I'm correct, I hope I am. Yes, that's exactly where we want to be. Okay, so now got our screws here and I do believe that I grabbed a bag of these earlier these look like they are fine thread so we need two fine threads I'm just gonna use two for now um, let's see here one CD-ROM screws by the way that's basically what these guys use CD-ROM screws so I could tell because it's a standardized cap stand. There you go. All right, so now we need to get the right drill bit for the job. Now get some Loctite handy as well, by the way. It's very important stuff. Okay, so what are we looking at here? 2.9, I'm gonna say a three mil. Good. Three mil should work perfectly. Uh, for this particular job. So let us make sure. Actually, there might be a 3 mil already out. Let's find out. Nope. Good, 3 you. mil is small. I can, I can find one. That's just about 3 mil. I think we'll use that one. Alright, let's get out my. Uh... Yeah. Yeah, folks, make sure if you're planning to do things that you don't leave your freaking tools at a job site. Okay, here we go. drill for free by the way somebody gave it to me <laughs> not a great drill all right so steel filings are bad always remember that I'm gonna clean this with my ream there we go it's be good actually here I'll show you another little trick by the way if you need to clean off uh, metal shavings if you lose it use a very large drill bit there you go you can Peel the shavings off that way. All right, now let's see if our screws will go through. Just about, a little bit tight, no problem. All right. Now I'm putting the uh, terminal block to the front. There we go. I'm insane. There. That's mounted in there pretty darn good, I'd say. I do say, I say, I say. Alright, so that's step one. We have our power supply in here. Um, step two is we actually need to put some uh, fuse and stuff in here. So I was thinking about using the front panel on this thing. So I was thinking maybe uh, right about there. Then it'll look like a wisp switch of some sort. 
Wouldn't that be interesting, huh? Alright, so let's see here. Here's that. I'm going to grab. Let's see here. We want this about half, so what do we got here? So if I'm looking at this. This is roughly what? 50 millimeter. So we're going to make this uh, 25 millimeter. There we go. So I'm just going to make a rough line in it. Here's our rough line. I'm going to make another rough line. I'm going to try to center this. How many of you are cringing at what I'm doing with my calipers right now? Show of hands. Okay, so now let's just verify that our holes are lined up. They are. Now, I'm going to show you a little trick about these guys. This is where... Um, let's put this aside for a second. This guy can go aside for a second. Okay, so... These little terminals here, these I love... I love these uh, binding posts of this type. Watch. Because I'm sure you guys wonder, well, if we're sticking metal through metal, shouldn't it short out? No. There's little spacers that keep these guys centered. Uh, the way that these work is you actually have to drill it to that exact size. So we're looking at exactly... Uh -huh. If this is metric, this would be 11.7, but it's not metric. It's clearly something else. 59, 128s. We're just going to go with metric because I know metric better. Okay, so there we go. A little bit of a wiggle. We could probably go solid 12. Yeah, I think I'm going to go solid 12 mil. Okay, so that's a solid 12 mil right there then. Okay, so what we're going to do now is I'm going to put pilot holes through this because I do not want to screw it up. I'm going to verify this. Let's see here. Yep, those are spot on. Okay, so now uh, that should be high enough that it's not going to affect anything because if we take a look at the switch, you'll see that this is now set back from the front. That gives us plenty of room for the binding post. We're going to just put the fuse in the back here and we're just going to run a jumper to it. Although... If we have enough room in the front, we really could just put, uh... I don't know. Oh, scrap could we put the fuse in the front? Do you guys want to put the fuse in the front? A scrap Probably could. Um, screw it. Change of plans. Alright, here we go. I'm going to, uh, mark this again. That is a spatula. That was a spatula. There. So there's our new holes, our new marks. So that should be perfect. That's exactly what we want. So now we need to find our 12 mil. And I think... No, that's not a 12. Um, I think, I think, I think... Let me see here. Uh, what do we got? Is this going to be... Okay, so that's going to be 15, 30 seconds there. 15, 30 seconds should actually work. Where's the thing? There's like a solid two, three weeks where I played the game, like straight on and off every time I came off work. All right, here we go. I was by myself and I was just running around, just like streaming it and shit. Didn't really get too many views, surprisingly. The fucking, I just like told me about the. Uh, I was just like, okay. And uh, I just did that. I started running around just with the Calvary sword. Uh, I think that's right. And see how this sets. Mm. Almost. See here. There we go. Alright, 
Alright, that should be it. Yeah, that looks good. Okay, cool. So we've got this. Kind of did a little bit of damage to the plastics here. Not a big deal. Use the reamer to clean it up a little bit. You know, if I had any kind of brain in my head, I would have removed the plastics before I did this. But, uh, you know me. Let's see here. Let's clean the plastics up just a little bit. I <laughs> don't like that Spider-Man. There we go. Okay, so that's that. I'm going to take the reamer. I'm going to take the back here. Actually, I might not be able to get that in there. What I could do, though, is I could use a larger step bit. I can clean that steel up a little bit. Just gonna try to get all the burrs off, eh? There we go. And the burrs just fall off. Cool. It's looking pretty good so far. Got to get rid of all this uh, plastic schmutz. Okay, so that should go back on there nice and even. I'm tempted to take my soldering iron to this and uh, clean up the plastic burrs, but I really don't like doing that. This little exacto blade should do it though. Oh, actually, I got one better. Here, we'll take this guy. There we go. So I'm pushing down as I'm going around. Uh, so that's doing is just peeling the plastic away. Now we've got clean openings. There we go. So now, if you'll take note, there's a divot. This thing actually insets that, see? So I can actually, that's what we want. That's actually what's going to keep um, the isolation intact. There we go. So actually, I'm going to loosen these off a little bit. And I'm going to drop this on here like so. And this is the key, is that this has to be centered. And once it's centered, it'll lock in and it'll keep these guys from shorting out. Okay, so I am going to put some burr washers on here. Nah, whatever. I'll put a couple of these brass ones on first. Alright, and we'll toss on the burr washers. And now we can get the preliminary tightening in place. Now, when we really crank these on, we want to make sure that the, uh, the divots are sitting in their place. Uh, because it'll actually pull itself into them and it'll lock it in place so that uh, there's no way that the brass can actually offset and potentially cause a battery short. Alright, I gotta get over the plastics here. There. Here we go. Alright. That's pretty good. Except for one fatal flaw. I didn't put my burr washer on there. The second one. In the game, in the subscription, so I could have already had it. I, wish, I really wish there was like, why they're just like, yo, this is everything. There we go. Because <laughs> it's, it's really fucking annoying. It's like, oh yeah, I got it. I usually, like, it's, it's been two or three times now where I've bought the game and then it gives it to me on a bottle. We'll tighten her up. Like, I bought the, the first this is actually a lot easier if you use a ratchet. I'll tell you right now. I might actually have a. Do I have a wrench just big enough? I do. Cool. Okay, so we know that we got about 5 amps peak if you're using this on a 12 volt system and the battery goes dead. That's about what you're going to see. By the way, look at that. Is that mint? OK, 
Okay, so let me just show you something as well. We're gonna set the meter here to uh, continuity. You wanna make sure, you wanna make damn sure none of this is making contact, especially if you're working with batteries. Okay, I'm just gonna throw another uh, nut on here. And this is just to lock it in place because you're gonna be torquing the outside quite a bit, right? Okay, there we go. There we go. That's beautiful. Now, don't forget. We now need to put the uh, hole in here for the fuse holder. I'm gonna put that right in next to it. And actually, before I do anything else, let's just make sure it's blocked by the interference. Look at that. That's beauty. If we look, there's tons of clearance there. Okay, now the tricky part's gonna be making the uh, power leads long enough for this as well, by the way. So it's gonna be something to keep in mind, okay? So now we've got our baseline here where our fuse needs to go. So we can put the fuse like right about here. I'm just gonna make it a Should be fine, that's far enough over. Okay, so now we're gonna make our pilot for this. There we go. Now this is the last one. Now we need to get our measurement here for the threading on this. So we're looking at about uh, 14 mil. Mm, it's not that bad. Yeah, we'll go 14 mil. This one's not good enough. That one's not good enough. It's not infantry, though. Not all the other ones. Or is it just all? Is that all? Too big. Oh, that is right. We want to be right there. So that's the ring we want. I could have sworn I grabbed a sharpie earlier. Yeah, well, it's just underneath the uh, ring of, uh, looks like, uh, tile there. Alright, last drill. I think that's it. I'm not sh yes, I think we're in. Just need to ream it just a tiny bit and we should be good. There we go. So I'm just going to take off a little bit of this plastic here. There we go. So that's that. And then the reamer through it. And then on the back side here, let's get rid of the burring. So, there we go. So now remember. We gotta make the power leads long for these guys. I may actually try soldering these on while it's inside, just for shits and giggles. There we go. I'm gonna put this in like so. Um, now, I had my washer here for this. 
it's pretty fucking good. It's North American Mexican food. It's what we think Mexican food should taste like. I go to Subway. Are you gonna go get food? I'm tempted. You hungry? I'm always hungry. I'm fat. There we go. There's a strong chance I may actually have a thyroid disorder or something. This up my here's 24 7. one location down the street. Here we go. Alright, so there's our power now. So as you can see, we've got the nice uh, fuse holder and our power terminals. So now let's get these uh, little guys soldered together. It's actually turning out to be a big project than I thought. I may not do the other switch now, just because this is taking a little bit longer than I expected. Okay, we've got this turned up. It's uh, pretty much full. Okay, so first things first, let's get our heat shrink set up, and we're going to need a little piece of jumper wire here. I'm going to hook up the uh, full bridge rectifier after. I want to get the fuse in place first, because the full bridge rectifier can be a replaceable part if something happens to it, right? I'm just going to slip the heat shrink over it. There we go. Heat shrinks on. Gonna get a little bit of uh, torching no, action going on here. No, this first one, and that guy can jump over to that. So let's make sure that's cool because we don't want this heat shrinking. Okay, there we go. So that should be cool enough now. I'm just gonna move this onto here. Well, actually, you know what? I did do this one backwards. Sorry. My bad. This should actually go on the bottom there. You know what? I really don't care, though. It's just a best practice thing. The uh, power coming in should be at the bottom. We're working with DC right now, so, I mean, like, it's less important where it's positioned, so... And here we go. There we go. I'm gonna grab before the heat shrink shrinks. I'm gonna keep that cool. Okay, so now that's a kind of a bit of a sketchy fuse holder. It's just the uh, it's just chinesium. It's fine, I guess. There we go. Okay, so this guy's ready to go. And I just want to double check it though. Good. Okay, so now, now we're gonna need these to be slightly longer because this is gonna have to, uh, commentator is taking the case off. Here we go. There is our red. And there is our black. What's up here for a second? Uh -oh. And let's tin uh -oh. these now. There's one. There we go. This is a great little lighter, by the way. It's a cigar lighter, of course. All right, so the, here's these. Now, for the next step, we need our full bridge rectifier. And that guy is sitting right here. Um, this one, I believe, is a 10 amp. 
So we're going to bring this to the AC in, and then we're going to take a set of leads off of here for positive. Okay, so this should be long enough now that we can get this thing back together, no problem. Okay, so that being the case, we are going to do a little bit of trimming here. Oh, no. Oh, my go. God. Oh. <laughs> okay, we're almost ready. Oh, I swear to the corner. It immediately get melted. Okay, let's tin this. I cannot put the trap here. That's upsetting. See, I've got a hiding here, so he doesn't fucking... There we go. Alright, that's good. We're going to get... Uh, I'm going to grab a clampy. I love my little paint piece, they're so handy. He's probably still in there. <laughs> I'm not dead, he's still in there. There we go. Okay, we're gonna get a couple little pieces of heat shrink here. Just one. Did you get it in there yet? Shit. Maybe we can broke kick some hundred. Here we go. And a little tiny bit of flux on here. <laughs> Just cause we're re reworking old yeah, solder. Way too much flux. You get charging it, but I feel like it's working. And one. And two. I really should get another camera for zooming in on the really fine stuff so you guys can see exactly what I'm doing. And I have tried that, but with limited success. Uh, this, like, like I said, making YouTube videos is a tricky, tricky process. Okay, so there's our inputs. They're on the AC side of the full bridge rectifier, which means that even if there's reverse polarity, it'll still power up without damaging the equipment. Now we can put our output leads, which go to the power supply. Just going to cut another couple of these. Now, once again, I have oversized the rectifier larger than it needs to be. Now, again, the reason why I do that is because then it won't dissipate as much heat. If you bring it closer to the working load, if you bring it closer to duty, I believe it's called, uh, it will produce heat. And if it produces heat, you need to cool it. Um, this way you don't have to cool it. Here we go. Uh, this set of leads is going to be going to the uh, circuit board, the uh, boost converter. Okay, so now we need to make sure that we get these guys on here. I need a tiny little baby bit of flux. Not a fucking mountain of it like I got before. There we go. Kingbo, Kingbo, Kingbo. Now this part does matter which one goes where because it's uh, one's positive, one's negative. This is the output side of the uh, full bridge rectifier, so if you don't do this part right, you will fuck shit up. Here we go. Slip this guy on here. So you guys can see what it's starting to look like. Pretty sweet, eh? I love heat shrink. Not only does it protect stuff from burning up or shorting out, it just looks pretty damn good. It's like it's tidy. And I like tidy. Okay, here we go. So now these ends are going to go into our power board, our boost converter. 
I'm going to tin these. Hopefully they'll fit into the terminals. You don't want to blob the solder on, on these ones because they have to fit into the terminals. Alright, that looks pretty good. Alright, here we go. I need my slotted screwdriver. Negative goes in, positive on the outside. Remember that trick I showed you too for opening the terminals up? Take your screwdriver, pop it in, give it a little bit of a wiggle. There we go, so there's the negative in, it's a nice tight fit. Let's get the positive in there now. And the positive is in. Well, let's make some magic happen. Okay, I'm gonna turn off the LA, er, lights here and turn them down a little bit so you can see the LEDs working. Maybe put the solder underneath here to hold it. Just gonna give it a little blast of air to make sure that there's no loose metal filling. There we go. Now, we've got banana clip uh, connectors now. Bloody awesome. So now I can actually get, uh, where's my red and black? Okay, I'm sure. Here's red and black. We've got the power supply set for 12 volts right now, which is fine. So I'm connecting the negative right now. Here's the positive. And as you can see, the switch has come online. So you can see that the LED is on on here. Now this is the terrifying part. Let's reverse polarity it. Look closely, here's my negative. Look it into the positive, and it's still working. See, reverse polarity. That's because of this magical little thing here called the full bridge rectifier. That is protecting you from damaging your equipment. Okay, so now that that's all in place, remember I'm running at 12 volts right now. Let me plug this access points back in because basically anything from about, I'd say safely, 9 volts up will now run this network switch. So let's just put this guy in here. And would you look at that? I got wearing a shirt right now. And you can see that it's. Uh, Processing some multicast. You can see the little flicker. Oh. Yeah. It's done with the multicast. Bet you I can make a multicast again. Now watch this. I did its announced packets. Uh, usually these devices will announce when they come online. Alright, so she's, she's talking right now. Pretty cool, eh? There we go. So that's all there is to it. Let's put it back together and uh, we'll call her a night. As far as the other switch goes, I'm going to do the other switch maybe tomorrow. And I'm debating on whether I'm going to set it up as a battery charger slash switch because uh, this one I just set it up as a regular switch. Okay, so this stuff here, by the way, just tuck it in. It's fine. This can actually go over top the rectifier. Let me put some light back on here. The rectifier can go off to the side here, and then you should be able to just slide this in. Here we go. Just like that. Alright, now let's put it back together and take a quick look at her from the outside. There's going to be a lot of fat I'm going to have to trim off this video, by the way. But on the bright side, I'm hoping that this was in depth enough um, to make you feel comfortable doing this yourself. Because uh, that's the whole intent here is to teach you guys how to do stuff like this so that you can get your equipment to do what you need it to where you need to do it.
No, I don't. So that is one switch down. This is an actual PoE switch. Now you can see it from the front. Look, you got your fuse port. You've got your banana connectors. And so now I've got a handy little 48 volt portable switch, which I can. Uh, well, this will actually live on my workbench for when I need to program stuff and whatnot. But um, you can easily throw this in like a work truck or use it on a site or whatnot. Uh, the sticky's not very great right there, so I'll have to re-glue that, but other than that, that's a pretty decent modification, folks. There you go, one last time, let's plug it in. Straight up standard polarity. No problem. So let's kill that again. And let's reverse polarity it. Reverse polarity, and better yet, let's turn up the voltage on this guy. Because this guy will work at anywhere up to 48 volts now. So let's just pick a random voltage. I'm going to stop at 30. There we go. So we're sitting at 30 volts right now. Look at that. Isn't that cool? That's, uh, so that's all there is to her. There's your switch mod, folks. And don't forget, if you guys need more details, shoot me a PM. I also have a Facebook group called Miss Fix It. It's the same, MS Fix It. Or you can go to uh, facebook.com forward slash the fix it gal, all one word. And um, yeah, we have discussions in there. You can ask me anything you want to know, and I can teach you how to do this stuff. But um, that should be it for now. Look, I just created a small little 48 volt. Uh, this is only 100 meg, by the way, switch. The next one I'm going to do. Because this is straight up 12 volts, this switch, I'm going to try a little experiment with this one. Uh, if it's actually putting out float at 13.5, which it just might, I may actually try to set this one up as uh, using batteries so we can run it as a UPS. That'd be cool, eh? All right, guys. Well, I hope you enjoyed, and we shall see you in the next video. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you've got ideas for videos or things you want to see. Um, just leave it in the comments below, and I'll get back to you. And join the Facebook group so that you can make suggestions and talk with me if you need help with anything, okay? Thanks a lot, guys.